Okay, so let's go ahead and keep talking about this conservation biology <clears throat> topic and idea. Um, we've identified the problem, species extinction, species decline, populations declining, etc. A loss of biodiversity leads to instability and problems in ecosystems. That's going to directly impact human, human welfare and our well-being as these species continue to decline and go extinct. So what we're struggling with is trying to understand why it's happening, but also how we can prevent it. So we were talking about in the last lecture the value system, and we talked about direct value, monetary value. <clears throat> can we put dollar tags on things? And that sometimes incentivizes us to keep them around. The challenge is if we don't put a dollar on it, sometimes we say, oh, well, I can't identify a dollar value with that particular chunk of woods or forest, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop it down. I don't want to leave it there because it doesn't have a direct value to me. So what we now want to start talking about <clears throat> are what we call the indirect values. These are the unseen values that a species, or we could say biome, etc., provides to humans. And our challenge here is it's very difficult to apply dollars to unseen values. So the best example I can use for this is everybody who has a pet. If you have a dog, consider your dog. Your dog has a direct value. What did it cost for that dog? $200, $500, $800. What does it cost to feed your dog, take it to the vet? There's a direct tangible dollar value put on that animal because of the expenses. Would you sell your dog? Would you sell your cat? Would you sell your pet for the direct value of it? Some people say, yeah, I don't care. Take my dog. I don't want it. Others would say, no, never. I would never sell my dog. I paid 200 for my dog. I'm not going to sell it for even 500 Because there is your association of an indirect value that that dog provides. The love, the compassion, the happiness that dog brings to your family and to your life, you can't put a dollar tag on it. So that's what we want to do with a lot of other things out there, is look at the indirect value. Okay, so... Think about these trees in the picture here. There's a direct value. That's firewood. I can chop them down, split it, and sell the firewood and make a couple hundred dollars. But what about erosion control? Those, stream, or those trees stabilize that stream bank, that river, that lake. And if I take the trees out, the bank continues to erode, changing the water quality, decreasing the habitat quality, and causing big ecological problems. But I can't put a dollar value on preventing an ecological collapse or destroying water quality. I, I can't say it's a $2,000 loss. That's the problem with indirect values. What about water purification? We used to have water in our country that you could drink without filtering. We could go to a stream and drink out of it. We could go to a river and drink out of it. We can't do that anymore. There's contaminants, there's pathogenic organisms. There are all sorts of problems in aquatic ecosystems because of the things we do. So how do we value that? I mean, think about what we pay to filter and clean water. I mean, we spend a lot of money on that kind of stuff. Um, and then for those of you who just go out and watch nature, ecotourism. Ecotourism is rated at around $4 billion per year in the United States. Bird watching, hiking, fishing, kayaking. How many of you guys are hunters? Think about all the money we spend on those activities. But then what is the value of that activity? The enjoyment of seeing a bird you've never seen before. Checking off a species on your life list to say, I've never seen that type of woodpecker, and now I finally have found it. I've seen it. I, for some people, that's just an amazing life accomplishment to see all these birds. What's the value of that? 
you know, we can do a dollar value on what it costs to buy the equipment, the binoculars, the outfits, etc. But what's the, the excitement and the value of enjoying nature? It decreases stress. It lowers blood pressure. It has therapeutic properties. Huge values. But again, it's tough to put dollars on those things. All right, so what we have to do when we're looking at species, ecosystems, etc., is try to find that balance. At what point would you sell your dog? When is it? When do you reach a point of saying, yeah, I'll sell this animal because I need the money. I'm so desperate. Or do you hit a point where you say, you know what? doesn't matter the money. I'll never do it. Those are the values we need to balance out with nature. Because if we keep moving in the direction we're moving, it's going to cost us financially so much more because we've destroyed species, we've pushed them to extinction, we've altered habitats, and that's going to cost us billions and billions of dollars more than if we leave those ecosystems stable and intact and biodiverse. So we want to look at this extinction issue and see what's happening here. So human actions are causing the sixth mass extinction. We are moving down a very, very bad path here with the number of species going extinct. 10 to 20 percent will go extinct in the next 20 to 30 years. So when we say extinction, a species is no longer present on Earth. Now, species have gone extinct naturally over the course of the Earth's history. We talk more about that in evolution. We've had five mass extinctions in the Earth's history. Those were all natural, meteor impacts, Earth's climate changes, the tilt of the Earth's axis, etc. But the sixth one that we're in, it's because of us. This is a human-driven mass extinction, and it's not a good thing. So just simple examples. Passenger pigeon. This bird's extinct. It does not exist on the face of the Earth because of humans. We overhunted and overconsumed this species. Back in the early or late 1800s, early 1900s, people said, wow, great, we can eat these birds. There's a value there. I, I can feed my family. I can sell it to restaurants. There's no rules and laws about how many I can shoot. I'm going to go and kill every one of them I see to feed my family to make money. And I'm going to tell my friends and their friends and their friends, and this caused us to kill every single bird. They're gone. They're extinct. Species is gone from the face of the earth because of human actions. So we have lots of examples there, unfortunately, of how human actions have pushed species into extinction. The challenge is right now we are accelerating how fast we're pushing species into extinction. Now, species do go extinct naturally but not at this rate. And people will say, well, if they could adapt, they'd be okay. Adaptation or evolution of a species takes a long period of time. You're not going to adapt in a hundred years. It's not possible. Species can't do it that quickly. You're not going to evolve into something different that fast. So what we want to investigate here are the causes of extinction. Now, species often are going extinct or being pushed towards extinction because of several of these causes combining. It's not just one single cause. It's multiple causes coming together to influence the population or the species. But the number one cause, the biggest, most influential cause for species extinction is due to habitat loss, alteration, or degradation, etc. So 85% of recent species extinctions are due to this. We've changed the environment. We've taken habitat away. We've converted what used to be forests into farm fields. We've taken prairie and turned it into farm fields and subdivisions and given us homes and shopping malls. And I'm not against human development, but at what cost? So in order for us to advance and develop and build new subdivisions, we push things into extinction, and that's the reality of it. So can we find ways to balance? Do we need to create a new subdivision instead of refurbishing an existing one? Why are we not rebuilding 
urban areas that are falling down instead of expanding into new territories. So the habitat issue is the number one issue. If we're going to deal with species extinction and try to prevent it, that's our first focus, habitat. Carrying capacity. So go back to population growth. You cannot get a population to grow if it doesn't have the resources. And one of the most important resources is simply a place to live. Take away their homes. I don't care how many rabbits you have, how many hawks, owls, whatever. If there's no home, they're not going to survive and their populations are going to go down. So major, major issue there. Uh, another issue what we call alien species. Now this doesn't mean outer space. Invasives. Species that are not native to this particular environment. So the fish you're looking at here is the Asian carp. They were brought over here intentionally back in the 80s, um, put into waste treatment plants to eat algae. So these fish eat algae. That's all they eat. They're algae eaters. They're herbivores. But they're really good at it, and there's nothing, excuse me, there's nothing that preys upon them naturally in our ecosystem. So they got brought over here, they got out of those waste treatment plants, and their populations exploded. No native species can prey upon them. Bass, bluegill, walleye, muskie, etc. They don't know what to do with these carp, because the carp jump out of the air, or jump out of the water into the air when they feel threatened. So the bass don't know how to kill that predator or kill that fish. They don't know how to eat it. So the bass go after their normal food source and they leave the carp alone. Meanwhile, the carp population explodes and grows exponentially, driving other species towards extinction. So the map there shows the dots where the fish have been detected. They started in the south and they've spread up the entire Mississippi waterway. Every tributary river connecting into the Mississippi has them or is at risk for them. And right now, if you notice, they're not in the Great Lakes, but that scares the heck out of the biologists who manage the Great Lakes because there's a multi-million dollar fishing industry in Lake Michigan. And if the carp get into Lake Michigan, they will destroy that fishing industry. So you're talking about millions and millions of dollars of revenue lost to fishermen in Lake Michigan and Chicago and Wisconsin and Minnesota and all those states because of that one species. Huge issue. Now, this has happened over the course of human history. Back in the 40s, the brown tree snake got accidentally introduced into Guam. It killed nine out of the 11 native bird species. It ate them, just ate them. The birds didn't know how to deal with a the snake. They never evolved to a snake predator in Guam, so the birds had no idea how to avoid this predator, and the snake destroyed nine out of 11 native species. So invasives are a huge problem. This is why you don't want to flush your goldfish down the toilet. Or, oh, I have this pretty lionfish and I don't want it anymore and I'm going to throw it into the Gulf of Mexico. I'm going to toss it into the ocean in Florida. That lionfish is destroying the Gulf of Mexico and the entire Caribbean ecosystem. Lionfish are rated as the worst ecological disaster in the Caribbean's history because somehow four or five, maybe up to eight of those fish got introduced into the, off the coast of Florida back in the 80s. It's destroying the ecosystem. Okay, another issue, and this is completely on us, pollution. So pollution are changes to, an, to the abiotic conditions of an ecosystem. This is human-driven 100%. We change the environment. We change the quality of the environment by creating or producing pollution. So acid rain because of our factories. Think about the changes in water quality because of chemicals we're dumping in them, etc. All those things are reflective of human actions upon the environment. Can we find ways to reduce those impacts? Can we find ways to minimize those? Those are the things we have to do as a species. We all have to make a little difference and then collectively it adds up to a major difference. So in the next lecture we'll talk a little bit more about pollution, a couple of the other issues. 
but then also how do we change this? What do we do to hopefully keep species from going extinct?